What's going on guys? Welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Luke Mindpower. This is the Luke Mindpower YouTube channel. I am a motivational coach, comedian, podcast host, and speaker. I'm all over social media and I'm here to empower you to live your most successful life ever. This is not a test. Your life is not a game. It's time to get serious and understand that time is so precious and you're never going to get it back. So I'm here to wake you up to your greatness and to help you evolve into reaching your fullest potential. Now, my channel is all about answering your questions and I've got some questions, one question today that I'm gonna be answering. And uh, please, once you've completed and watched this video, let me know what's on your mind, let me know your thoughts, let me know your questions in the comments below so that I can then create more content for you. And not only am I able to answer your questions, but you're gonna inspire someone else who's subscribed to my channel who may be dealing with something very similar in your life, so you're also being of service to someone else because you know what? Sometimes it's not easy to open up. I get it, I feel it. It's hard. It's hard to be vulnerable, it's hard to be transparent, it's hard to be open like that. So you're doing a massive, massive service to someone who's not ready to open, but they just wanna get some more information. They just wanna watch some videos. They wanna see what somebody else has asked that may be similar to their situation, and you're going to inspire people. So that's the beautiful thing. But guys, before I begin, don't forget to click that red subscribe button, hit that notification bell, so that you can get notified every single time I upload new content. So let's get straight into the question today. It is how to get over an unsupportive dad. Now, one of the hardest things for me, man, like growing up, uh, I was the youngest of four children. So my dad was never home, right? I can't say that I never had any good experiences with him because I did, but he was busy all the time. And so was my mum, right? Come on, you think about it, right? He was working 12 hours a day. Three, he'd come home at 3 a.m. Then when I get up to go to school, he'd be gone. And then, uh, no, he'd be still, he, sorry, he'd be gone. He, he gets home at 3 a.m., then when I would be going to school at 8 a.m., he'd still be sleeping. Then when I'd come home at 3, he would be going to work. He'd be gone by then. He has to go to work at like 2.30. So I never really, during the week, I never really saw dad. But mum, mum was also working. Mum was working at a disabled school from, you know, 8.30 to 3, 3 o'clock. And that's the time when I was at school. But then mum would come home. Mum would have to cook and clean and, and uh, you know, prepare everything and manage four children right so it was challenging and I'd have no resentment towards my parents I used to but I realized that they were doing the best they they, they could at the time to give us the, the life that we have and what I'm getting to now is that our parents also went through shit in the history of life and the evolution of you know war indoctrination, culture, the way of life. Different cultures have different upbringings, that's for sure. And different environments, different countries. So if your dad is unsupportive, there's a reason why he's like that. There's a very high chance that his dad was unsupportive to him. And one thing that I really, really strongly believe is that you only project what you have within yourself. So if you've been through trauma, if you've been through pain, if you had an unsupportive parent, that becomes then your habit. That becomes then ingrained in you and you start to emulate that in your reality and you're even unconscious of it and you're unaware of it because you never had that attention either. You never had that support. So how can you give support when you don't have support, right? Uh, and so it's really, really hard, I understand, because you kind of, you yearn for that, you want that, you want that support, you want your parent to, to, to say to you, yeah, you know, I'm here for you, whatever you need, like, whatever you believe is right and whatever makes you happy, I'm here to support your unconditional love, right? But when we haven't gone through that ourselves and experienced that, then we, how, how are you supposed to show that if you don't have it, right? So one thing for me that I realized last year when I moved in with my parents uh, to their house, which I never saw coming, but it was the one thing that I hadn't done for 16 years. I'd lived alone, I'd lived with my sisters, 
and I'd never wanted to move in with my parents because I just didn't like where they lived and I saw them when they came to birthday parties and stuff and family events, but I never really got to connect with them. But the one thing that really, really was difficult for me was my relationship with my mum because my mum was very religious and I felt like she was always pressuring me and I just always felt like I couldn't be myself because she always wanted me to believe in a specific type of life and believe in that the faith and that just wasn't for me. But really what I wanted my mum to do is just to say, Luke, I believe in you, I support you, I love you unconditionally and whatever you want to do in your life, uh, I got your back. And when I moved in with my parents, I still realized that my mum didn't have my back. I still realized that she didn't really support my uh, dreams, what I speak about, right? Because I, I detached myself from religion, basically, and from the culture that I grew up in, because I felt freedom. I was like, I am me now. I'm not controlled or, or manipulated or indoctrinated or uh, conditioned by the external sources. I am me. I choose to believe in what I believe in because it is my truth. I choose to just be free. I choose to just be a spirit. I choose to just be neutral, right? I choose to be love. So when I moved in with my parents and I had a few moments where I was triggered emotionally by my mother because she said a few th different things uh, to me that hurt my feelings, I realized at that moment because I went into a deep depression and for a whole week I for a whole week I was depressed I was in my bed she could tell because when I would come out to eat she was like what's wrong with you are you okay she asked me questions she could feel my energy dropped and I, the connection was gone and the first thing that I did was that I started to um, research I started to research inner child healing and I started to research on YouTube uh, codependency. That's when I found codependency, but I started, I, the first thing I, I realized because what happened to me is I completely lost my sense of self. I was lying on my bed after my mum said that I was too skinny because I lost a fair bit of weight because I was doing a 72 hour fast. And plus when I was living in the Shaolin temple, I lost a lot of weight as well. I was there for three months and it was only vegetarian food. And I wasn't used to that. So plus I was training every day. So yeah, I, and and so when I came back to my sister, my parents' house, I was a lot skinnier. And the clothes that I was wearing, you know, my mum was like, "You need to put on some weight. You're this and that." And I grew up very self-conscious. I was very lanky and skinny, and it kind of took me back to when I was a child. And when my mum said to me, "You know, your pants are baggy. You need to put on some weight." I was completely triggered emotionally and I completely lost my cool. I stormed into my room, I closed, smashed the door and I said, fuck off. Like I was so angry. And so basically I went to a, into a deep depression and then I started to research and I typed in on YouTube, inner child, how to heal your inner child. Because what happened was I lost Luke mind power and I became a child again. I became that little 14, ins, ins, 14 year old that was really insecure, really unhappy really self-conscious about his body. And what I learned from that experience eventually, because I started writing about it and then I learned about codependency. And what I found from that experience was that I was codependent from my mother. I was still wanting my mother's support. At 36 years young, I still wanted mum to say to Luke, hey Luke, I believe in you, I love you and I support you unconditionally. I don't care what you believe in, I don't care what religion you are. I, that's what I wanted. And at that moment, I realized that I had to be my own best friend. I had to be the one that supports me. I had to realize that I don't need my parents' support. Whether you support me or you don't, that's up to you. But I support me, I believe in me, I love me. And so the moral of the story is for you to realize that you have to learn how to not be reactive. You have to learn to accept the way that your parents are. You have to understand that they grew up in a different era, in a different lifetime. They experienced different things and you can't change them. And that's the one thing that I do now is like sometimes my parents will talk about religion or uh, they'll just, um, my mum loves to pick me up on things that I do wrong. Like she just said, Luke, if you want to smoke in the garage, make sure you open the door or open the garage because when we're going there in the morning, we can smell. You know, sometimes after a long night or day, I like to have a glass of wine and have a cigarette. So she said that to me. And, you know, when 
she sees something or whatever, she'll come to the door and she'll go, can you please make sure that you do this or you, when you splash the water on the kitchen, make sure you clean up the water. So she likes to do that and it's very easy for me to go, mom, I'm freaking working, can you leave me alone? Or for me to be reactive from that and say, it doesn't smell, what are you talking about? You know, it's easy to be reactive, but I've learned to, to not be reactive and, and that's holding on to my power, that's protecting my peace because the more you are reactive, the more you lose your cool, the more you waste your energy. And understand that, hey, you're not here in this life to change your parents or to tell your parents how to be. They are the way that they are, let them be. The best thing that you can do is focus on yourself, be the role model, and believe in what you wanna do in your life. And do the best that you can. You're always going to have haters and critics and people that don't believe in you or they judge you, but as long as you don't lose yourself in their judgment or their perception of what it is that they believe you need to be doing. So focus on you and be the role model and folk and, and understand your emotional intel intelligence and emotional triggers. This, this is that whole experience of my depression was emotional triggers. I was always getting triggered because those words of skinny, lanky, they affected me because I, I went through that childhood trauma and that's a whole new story. But if you want to learn how to overcome your emotional triggers and uh, emotional stress uh, and understand emotional intelligence, that's something that I teach in my live uh, coaching as well as my one-on-one -on -one coaching. So click the link below if you want to get in touch with me. I do offer a 40-minute complimentary session where you get to connect with me for 40 minutes and we can talk and connect and understand where you're at and see how I can help you moving forward in, in your healing and transforming your life because this is exactly what I do in my motivational coaching. So guys, I hope that's been valuable to you. Don't forget to click that red subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you can get notified every single time I upload new content. I wanna hear from you. Let me know if you have any questions so that I can answer them in new videos. Uh, and let me know how you deal with uh, you, whatever your experience with your parents, for example, if it's your dad or your mom that's not supportive, how do you deal with it? I'd love to hear from you because everybody's got a different advice. Everybody's been through different things and. You know, we can all learn from each other. So guys, have a great day. I look forward to hearing from you. And if you want to reach out to me and connect in person, click the link in the description below. I look forward to seeing you very, very soon. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and TikTok. I'm on there all the time as well, uh, doing my thing and uh, inspiring you to live your best life. Peace.